Good morning and welcome. I'm glad you've chosen to be with us today. Give light to my eyes, lest I fall asleep in death, lest my enemies say I have overcome him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My friends, mindful that we are sinners, we call upon God's grace and mercy to be upon us, that we be ready and worthy to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you call us to fast. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you call us to prayer. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to almsgiving. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Guard your church, we pray, O Lord, in your unceasing mercy. And since without you mortal humanity is sure to fail, may we be kept by your constant helps from all harm and directed to all that brings salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear the word of the Lord, princes of Sodom. Listen to the instruction of our God, people of Gomorrah. Wash yourselves clean. Put away your misdeeds from before my eyes. Cease doing evil. Learn to do good. Make justice your aim. Redress the wrong. Hear the orphans plead. Defend the widow. Come now. Lest us set things right, says the Lord. Though your sins be like scarlet, they may become white as snow. Though they be crimson red, they may become white as wool. If you are willing and obey, you shall eat the good things of the land. But if you refuse and resist, the sword shall come to consume you. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees have taken their seat on the chair of Moses. Therefore do and observe all things whatsoever they tell you, but do not follow their example. For they preach, but they do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens hard to carry and lay them on people's shoulders, but they will not lift a finger to move them. All their works are performed to be seen. They widen their phylacteries and lengthen their tassels. They love places of honor at banquets, seats of honor in synagogues, greetings in marketplaces, and salutation, Rabbi. As for you, do not be called Rabbi. You have but one teacher, and you are all brothers. Call no one on earth your father. You have but one father in heaven. Do not be called master. You have but one master, the Christ. The greatest among you must be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but whoever humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. My friends, at first blush, today's gospel can seem like it's talking to us preachers. And it is. Make no mistake about it. Jesus is speaking to the preachers of his day. He's speaking to the preachers of this day. The message is the same. Unless you are to be authentic witnesses of God's love and God's mercy, then people will listen to what you say, but they will discount it. They will not follow you because what you say does not match what you do. This is true of the preachers of today. It is true of our politicians today. It's true of anyone who holds authority over another person. 
which means it includes my friend's parents, it means it includes teachers, it includes our first responders, it includes, frankly, all of us. But we all have the responsibility to practice what we preach, to not let our words be discarded because they don't mass match our actions. Our first reading today from Isaiah, God is giving through his prophet the people an opportunity to repent. He says, good things are in store for you. You just do what I ask you to do. Isn't that what we tell our children? Good things are in store for you if you but do what I ask you to do. My friends, we are all God's children. We all need to heed his message. This season of Lent, the season of prayer, of penance, of almsgiving, of fasting, is a good time for us to renew ourselves, to regroup, and to set aside those things that keep us from having our deeds match our words. So let us, in the words of Jesus, humble ourselves today. Humble ourselves and admit that we are far from perfect and that we need to figure out in this life how to do God's will so that we will enjoy eternal life with him. Sounds so easy, but boy, is it hard. So let us pray for one another today that we have the humble heart of Christ and that we do what he asks us to do. Let us call to mind the needs we have in our hearts and the needs of our community and world as together we now pray. That all members of the church may be strengthened by the Holy Spirit, growing in the virtues of justice and humility, we pray. That all political leaders may be guided by the light of Christ in their service to those they lead, we pray that those who are suffering with brokenness or hurt may be comforted and consoled in the arms of the Lord's loving embrace, we pray. For this community of faith, that we may be conformed evermore to Christ during this Lenten season and be sanctified in our prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, we pray. For the souls of all the faithful departed, May they, through the mercy of God, now rest in peace, we pray. For the particular needs and intentions we gather up together, we pray. Father, we are your humble servants. We ask that you hear and answer our prayers in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased to work your sanctification within us by means of these mysteries, O Lord, and by it may we be cleansed of earthly faults and led to the gifts of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through bodily fasting, restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ your Son. Through him the angels praise your majesty. Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. 
May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirits upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Earl, our Bishop, and all servants of the church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. May praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Aware of God's great love for us and his mercy that is shown upon us every day, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the risen Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain so i'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last i lay down i will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown in the old rugged cross stained with blood so divine a wondrous beauty i see for twas on that old cross Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown to the old rugged cross will I ever be true it's shame and reproach glad Then he'll call me someday to my home far away, where his glory forever I'll share. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I live. Someday for a crown and exchange it someday for a crown. I will recount all your wonders, I will rejoice in you and be glad, and sing songs to your name, O Most High. Let us pray. May the refreshment of this sacred table, O Lord, we pray, bring us an increase in devotion, in devoutness of life, and the constant help of your work of conciliation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Graciously hear the cries of your faithful, O Lord, and relieve the weariness of their souls, that having received your forgiveness, they may ever rejoice in your blessing. Through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord as we love and serve one another. Thanks be to God.